Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your friendly neighborhood fermenter, fellow fermenter, fermaster, ferminator. So, 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 what, what is this video about? This video is about something that is very important to me. And why am I talking so quietly? Because my sister is sleeping right now. It's 7 p.m. She has a night shift that starts at 10, so I have to be kind of quiet. But I also have to make this video because I've been putting off this video for like a half century. But in all actuality, this video is very important to me. Why? Because, because this video is about sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is near and dear to my heart, as many of you know. As you know, mom. I have been making sauerkraut pretty consistently for about nine months now. It has been something that I try to eat every single day. Sauerkraut is one of the keys to life and longevity, and I think I'll go into that in another video. What are we talking about? After about a year making sauerkraut, I just wanted to film my process for you all and just show you really how easy it is. Again, I'm in grad school right now. Do I have a lot of time? I have more time than you think between blasting lectures, slamming flashcards, but I do find time to return to my roots, my deep roots in German heritage in this rich culture of making sauerkraut. So, so, so. Sauerkraut, how do you make it? What do you start with? What do you do? Well, how do you, is it hard? So what, what are the base ingredients we got? Cabbage, cabbage is your base ingredient. What else do we have? We have salt. Salt is the other ingredient, cabbage and salt. What is the last ingredient that we need? Time. 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 Like every other 23 year old, I asked for a sauerkraut crock for my birthday. But essentially, all you really need is a gallon glass jar. I mean, you don't even need a gallon. You could use a uh, standard size, like little little liter mason jar. If you want to, if you want to be a little bit, I was going about my day, found some time off from freaking studying. We approach this like we do all sauerkrauts, and this is how you should approach it too. Before you do anything with sauerkraut, is you need to weigh how much cabbage you have. I started with one cabbage, one four pound cabbage. And before you just start stabbing this cabbage, you should take one or two leaves off to use as stoppers for later. From the local Whole Foods, I went and got a celery root as well, so you don't have to use a mandolin slicer. Every single sauerkraut that I've made before this time, I have chopped it up like a peasant. Back when my ancestors lived in um, Germany, did they have a mandolin slicer? No. We were on the farm cutting up cabbage with a sharpened piece of slate to chop that celery root up and I put it in. Anyway, it was about five pounds of organic material. As many of the fermenting community is well aware of, the ratio that we go for in sauerkraut is five pounds of cabbage to three tablespoons of salt. Put it in there and I just, yeah, you just gotta press it down. It's a labor of love primarily because it is, I'll tell you one thing, it is not a walk in the park. We are not messing around here. And something I love about sauerkraut crock is that they give you a, they give you your own wooden bat to beat down the cabbage with. I was using my fist beforehand. It is kind of a default thing to use your fist. And when I saw this bat, I was like obviously very excited. Um, and I was like, oh, this is going to make it so much easier. Does it make it that much easier? It's, uh, I'm not going to say it's a gimmick. I just think that you could, there's other materials that are better for that. It actually kind of is a gimmick. If I was using my fist, it would have been a lot better. And I do recommend using one of those meat hammers or, you know what would be good is one of those like banana smashers. Those would be really, those would be sick. I think this is a great activity for a Saturday night. So what we're trying to do here, it's pretty basic, is trying to mix the salt in, break down the cell walls, get the water out of the cabbage, and have a layer of this brine on top of the cabbage material so that it can ferment anaerobically. That is what we're trying to get, those bacteria that do that kind of fermentation. If you want to learn more about this, you can just uh, direct message me. It might take me a few business days to respond because I have so many subscribers, but... 
So as with most fermenting projects, you know, adapting to a new tool or something, I realized that fermentation crock that I was using had a very large surface area in the bottom. I wasn't getting enough of a brine to cover cabbage adequately. So, so we went to like one of those lesser known sort of indie hip grocery stores um picked up two more cabbages i was not gonna go through all of this work and have a sauerkraut that just like wasn't lacto fermented and wasn't sour and wasn't getting the anaerobic stuff going on i don't know about you i don't have time for that walmart does have organic cabbages for 126 a pound you need to use organic cabbages i know i know that regular cabbages are so much cheaper regular cabbages are probably one of the cheapest things per pound besides maybe like salt or like water they probably have a lot of pesticides on them and that's not gonna that's definitely not gonna help out the bacteria that is why so that i decided to get they need two to stop that. more cabbages um each of them being about five pounds this all brought up my total cabbage weight to about 13 I think maybe 14 pounds in total, um, which is a ton of sauerkraut. That is a ton of cabbage, but that's good. You know, we want that. I spent the next like hour just shredding the sh shredding these guys up like I was running a freaking taco stand. Mandolin slicers are it definitely makes the process easier. Okay, so at this point in the process, I was getting an adequate layer of water coming out of the cabbage. I had about three inches from what I could see. So at that point, you just throw on the cabbage leaves that we had saved from the beginning, and those are called your primary stoppers. The other thing that you, is so nice about crocs is that they come with these cool weights that are your secondary stoppers and hold down the cabbage leaves make sure none of the little guys get up because when the little guys get up to the surface which they will they're gonna start to rot on the top and that's not that's not anaerobic that's some aer aerobic bacteria that you don't want doing the whole thing put this lid on and um and like the last cool thing about these crocs is that they have a little moat on the rim of them that you pour water into and it makes a water seal that allows air out so like all the carbon dioxide being released but it doesn't allow air back in this is the ancient version of the nipple lids the ones like the twisty glass things this is like the og moat technique that was that i just left it there for five weeks Five weeks of neglect, five weeks of patience, getting rocked by school. I finally got on winter break and was able to harvest what I had grown. Greetings, people. You're typically supposed to ferment sauerkraut for three weeks. Well, that's what a lot of people say. So this has been about five weeks and one day which is not like absurd there's people in germany who like literally just leave this stuff in for like 10 years okay breaking that seal so first impressions looks like chicken broth and it's got some floaters on top and there's some bubbles in there too which i don't know if you can see in the smell it's pretty strong and that's that's definitely what we want Okay, one half of the slimy boy is coming out. Look at my hand right now. Look how gross that <laughs> second boy coming out. Okay, nice, nice. The primary stoppers. Put these guys on the side. Mmm. I just want to put that in my bed. I'm going to put this back. Well, wow. I'm impressed easily by improved sauerkraut making techniques because what I was doing before was just like very, very beginner steps and this method was the first time I used a mandolin slicer and it's the first time I used a crock. Okay, so the only part that matters really is the taste.
That is so solid. It is very sour. And that's something that I've never really gotten before. And the texture is just like perfect because before I was getting like, it's getting like kind of big pieces that sort of tasted like, still like cabbage, like raw cabbage. All right, thanks for watching and like and subscribe if you want. This is always fun. And I think this is something that if I can do it, you guys should definitely be able to do it. And most of it's just waiting, so. It's also sort of like a mystery. It's almost like a surprise. It's like an investment. You put something in and it transforms and then you get something out later and you don't really know what happened, which is sort of what I like about it. Anyway, that's enough with that. Okay, bye.